Hi, my name is uh, Dr. Charlene Gamaldo. I'm a Johns Hopkins uh, Neurology Sleep Faculty Member, and I'm the Medical Director of the Howard County Sleep Disorder Center. My name is Rachel Salas. I'm a sleep neurologist, um, board certified in both specialties. So restless leg syndrome that has also recently been coined Willis-Eckbaum disorder is a clinical sleep disorder. It, is, it, it requires four essential criteria that involves an, a person who has uncomfortable sensations in their legs that is associated with an urge to move. This urge to move usually comes on at rest and it peaks at night. And for that reason, because it peaks at night and they want to move, it causes disruption in their ability to go to sleep. And for that reason, they often show up in a sleep clinic because it causes problems with uh, ability to go to sleep and causes problems with daytime functioning as a result. Restless leg syndrome can occur in anyone. Um, there, is, there tends to be more of a female predominance, but um, again, it can occur in anyone. Um, even children can have it. There tends to be a hereditary component there. Um, people that have iron deficiency anemia are, are more at risk. People that have kidney disease, particularly end-stage renal disease, it can put them at higher risk, probably because of the um, iron. Um, patients with peripheral neuropathy, um, particularly those that suffer from diabetes, could be at higher risk. So there's certain things um, certain uh, other disorders that increase the risk for restless leg syndrome. Um, but then again, it could also be, you know, sporadic. People could just develop it. So treatment strategies for restless leg syndrome is number one, um, educating them about it because there are exacerbators um, out there, uh, particularly over-the-counter medications, anything with uh, antihistamines are big culprits for essentially kicking people into, you know, um, you know, these flares of restless leg syndrome. Um, medications are actually very good for re pa patients with restless leg uh, syndrome. It can actually improve their quality of life. There's different classes. The FDA approved uh, dopamine agonists um, are available. If the patient has a restless leg syndrome, we'll always check an iron panel so to kind of see what their iron status is. And if that's deficient or even low normal, we, we, a lot of times we'll try treating just with iron first, and that may be all patients need. Uh, for the more severe types, and these are typically what we see, you know, because you know, people who are coming to Hopkins, you know, uh, Charlene Gamaldo and myself, we trained under um, Richard Allen and Chris Early, who are, you know, worldly known for restless legs. And, um, you know, sometimes we'll use other medications uh, like opioids um, and even anti-epileptic drugs. And we've had really high success rates with those. Mm -hmm.